So you spend several days, weeks, and months prepping your resume, your LinkedIn profile, submitting job applications to several different companies. You update your online portfolio several times. And then now you finally have a call with the recruiter and they want to bring you into the hiring manager and present your portfolio. Well, what do you show? Let's dive in. All right, so you've made it through the pain of prepping and it's finally come to presenting. Do you show your online portfolio again? The answer is probably no. What I found is curating a deck for the company is a nice gesture. It sets you up for success. It doesn't guarantee the job by any means, but it allows you to curate your story to your audience. So what I put together is a presentation template. It's not like a template where you plug in your design assets and everything magically looks good. But this is more of a guide to help you extract key elements of your problem solving to your interviewer. And so this is heavily influenced by the STAR method that companies like Amazon and others use to evaluate their candidates. So STAR basically stands for Situation, Task, Action, and Results. And I won't be covering this so much into detail, but it's exactly what it sounds like. The key takeaway is that it's a way to respond to commonly asked interview questions. And so if you do it correctly, you're basically telling the interviewer the right context, how you approached it, what you did, and the results of your actions. All right, so let's dive in. Um, the first few slides are all about intros. I like to personalize my title slide with my name or however you want to brand yourself, and then the company's logo. And so it's pretty minimal here, but the personalization to your interviewer is a nice touch because it's not just any deck. It's a deck curated just for them. So the next slide is a slide dedicated just for you. I wouldn't spend more than three to five minutes on your intro, but the key here is that you want to talk about yourself, why you're excited about this role, and a little bit about your journey. So the last slide is going to be about introducing your projects. In my experience, I typically find myself to have about an hour with the interviewer, and so that means you realistically have like 30 to 45 minutes to present your work. And so at this point, I like to have a split view of the projects as a teaser and then talk about my intentionality of why I'm presenting these projects. So as an example, uh, I chose these two projects because project A shows my ability to take a product from end to end through the entire design process, while project B might be more about my product sense or how I drive good design decision making. You want to curate these themes based off of what you can derive from the job description and from the recruiter themselves because the recruiter should have good information from the hiring manager on what they're looking for. So be sure to ask them questions about what they're looking for and the problems that they're trying to solve with this role. So next we're going to go into providing a bit of structure. You want one slide where you can just give your interviewer a bit of context on what they expect to see. These are the main bullets I've used in the past, which I believe frame my portfolio to set expectations early. After providing that structure, now we're focused on the project overview. Give context about what you'll be covering about this project. So what is the overarching story? Is there specific challenges that you overcame that made this story? Is there specific industry expertise that you're bringing to this project that you expect would resonate with the company? Is there overcoming odds where you had some personnel experience that you can show that you can make really great working relationships. This is all to hook your audience's attention and give them context about the project. So now that you've hooked them in, now you're painting the picture. So you wanna provide them with the business and user problem. So why are customers leaving? What are customers experiencing? How is the business being impacted? You want them to recognize your product sense as that will be important as you start talking about your design decisions. I typically like to show an image of the current design to give them a quick visceral reaction of where things were. So after providing context, I like to have a slide that is just a concise problem statement. So one thing here is the specific business problem. You can talk about that. But one thing I like to show is the specific design problem. So did you recognize that there were problems in the process or did you approach it in a unique way? But what is the unique design problem that you saw? Because this will be important as we walk through the other parts. Next, we'll be covering roles. So we've talked about the business, their problem, and now I just give a brief overview of my role in relation to others. So I wanna to try to have as much clarity as I can talk about what I did, who I worked with, and who were the key stakeholders and decision makers 
and that just basically gives them a better picture of some of the obstacles that you may run into. So now that you defined your role, you want to talk about your tasks and objectives. And specifically speaking, we're talking about design objectives. And so these are the things that you needed to understand or have answers to so that you can design the right experience. Because this is going to basically bring the story together between this is the problem I saw as a designer. I had these questions and I needed to answer these questions in some way so that I can perform the right actions. All right, so the next two slides are all about actions. This is most likely where you have most of the meat from your online portfolio already built. And so the key here is to articulate just one cohesive story. You have a problem, you have your objectives, and from those objectives, you perform these actions. This is where you can start talking about things like wireframes, your user research, your user flows, and any of the other design activities that you've already done. One big thing that I shared during my last presentation tip video is make sure you talk about the ideas and processes that died. Talk about your approach to solving a problem and how that refined over time, what you learned and how you moved forward. How that can look is to throw in a done but not done slide. This is where you have the opportunity to talk about a state of the project that you thought was really solid but didn't exactly yield the results that you expected. So another thing that you can also add is just have a slide where you articulate the challenges or problems that you had. And so as you talk about the done but not done slide and then talk about the challenges, you can follow that up with additional action slides until we get to that final design. Now that you've clearly talked about your problem, your objectives, and the actions you took, we finally made it to the final parts of the presentation where you can talk about your results. Show your final design in all of its glory, shots and context, animations are a huge bonus. You can also show marketing material, but just be clear about what you exactly did. And so if you work with a marketing team or you work with an animator or you did any of these things, just be clear about what you did and how you actually influence others in their design decision making as well. So to wrap up your project, you want to end it on one of the most important slides. And that is to talk about your impact. Have a slide summarizing the impact of your product and the impact as you as the designer. I've covered some details in my last video about talking about your impact as a designer, but the key thing here is that you want to bring it back full circle. Talk about the original business problem and the user problem that you stated earlier in the presentation. Did you accomplish your goals? If you did, what were they? And if you didn't meet them, what would you do differently? All right. So it is a lot of work for a 30 to 45 minute presentation, but I can assure you that it will definitely be worth it. Because essentially what you've just done is created one project and that'll roughly be about 15 to 20 minutes. And then you repeat that process for another project. And again, if you're able to effectively articulate your experience uh, as a designer, then a lot of the work is really off of your shoulders and it makes repeating the process of presenting your portfolio just that much easier because the portfolio essentially presents itself. So if this video has helped you, definitely leave a like if this ends up helping you land your next UX gig. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Thanks again for watching. If you are looking for more content into getting into UX design or becoming a better UX designer, definitely subscribe as I'll be creating more content. Thanks guys. Take care.